Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge in the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2023 Wyndham Championship. This is my all-in-one show, which we're going to do the whole preview, course breakdown, everything you're going to need to know from that side. going to dive into a bunch of custom stat models where I'm ranking stroke gain uh, priorities. And, uh, of course, then we're going to do a full player analysis to get you my DFS picks and then also get you my betting card. That's why I'm trying to get this show out for you guys today on Monday. Also, we have a little bit of strep throat running through the house, so I'm expecting I'm going to be down uh, here shortly. So want to get it while the voice is still working. So all that said, give me about an hour max to go through all this information. Of course, you can skip through. I'll uh, title each of the uh, different topics as mentioned. And uh, thanks for stopping by. And let's go talk a little golf. Okay, so uh, the three of them open. Wow, lots of things to talk about here, but I'm going to try to keep it pretty brief. So, of course, Lee Hodges went wire to wire uh, as winner. I was not on that from a betting perspective and definitely was not on that um, even from a DFS side. I don't really know many people that were, but maybe somebody was. And there was uh, one thing that I missed uh, in the analysis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but good for him. I mean, so many things happen, um, but I think I got some stuff here to show and then we'll kind of move on. So real quick, let's just look at uh, from a stroke game perspective, uh, how all the top performers did. Of course, Lee Hodges kind of set the pace for something that he's only done once before, and uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But if you look at uh, went nuts with the irons, and uh, and the putter also went off. So I mean, everything you need to win, he never faltered. I think he ended up winning by seven shots. Is that what it ended up like? Last I knew, he like he came in there with what five shot lead. I think the closest that ever he got was maybe three or four shots. Oh, that's right. So JT Post and I forgot about his triple bogey on the last hole because. I thought he was good, winning by four, but he ultimately won by seven shot lead with JT posted. Of course, you know, tried to go for the win. Ended up still getting what a tie for second with a uh, party Marty Laird and uh, Strillman, uh, who had a nice outing again there. Some other things I guess we could talk about uh, in final stand. Let's just take a look at from a stroke gain who did also very well. Uh, JT Post in love with the iron. So did Sam Ryder, which that's kind of expected. Uh, Poston definitely since the John Deere, maybe even before that, the Travelers game has definitely kind of surged back. And of course, the things that we were talking about in the preview show, you know, Irons and the putting and Dylan Wu, who went nuts with that, uh, gaining 11.5. So I guess would be your leader in that category. All right. So this was the thing that um, on the analysis that I did not pick up on with uh, Mr. Lee Hodges. The other time that he went off with his irons and almost had exact replica of what he did from a stroke gain experience last year was at the 3M Open. And, uh, you know, just started kind of fumbled on this because I was just trying to understand, like, you know, whenever a guy kind of comes out of nowhere, you know, the only other time that he was on my radar was the Amex, which on Sunday he faltered. Kind of funny from a showdown finale, there was a lot of guys at the top that, you know, uh, Aaron Badley, who was coming in, um, I mean, pretty much everybody at the top except Finau, you know, wouldn't have been shocked if they would have fell apart a bit like what Scott Piercy did last year. But of course, it was a little windier um, on Sunday where the conditions were just perfect uh, pretty much throughout the whole tournament. Hence, you know, shooting 24 under, which also set a record. And also Lee Hodges was the first one to go wire to wire. But again, the tournament's only been around since 2019. Anyways, you can see pretty simply, everything was exactly the same except the putter. I mean, he lost four strokes with the putter last year, gained 6.2. And with that, you know, kind of stroke gain totals, you know, game over, you're going to win. But really, I could kind of look at, I mean, the CJ Cup, you know, he was up there out of like a limited field out of 80. The Valero, he showed up this year. And the Amex, other than that, man, a bunch of missed cuts. And like I said, for me, he just was not on the radar. But good for Lee Hodges. He's on our radar now. And, uh, you know, it's definitely at the 3M Open. We'll have to keep an eye on him because he's doing things there for some reason. That course for him is just something that must fit his eye and his swing and everything. Because, again, he's from Alabama. So not like he's a home Minnesota guy. So, yeah, no real reasons on why he comes to the 3M Open at TPC Twin Cities and just goes nuts. But he has done it two years in a row. Just to putter work this time and he gets his first win on tour all right and the last thing i mean you know actually from a pick perspective i was really happy with a lot of things that i called and did and i didn't put a ton of teams into the large 200k gpp uh, lineup i put seven teams and it's kind of what i've been doing you know unless it's like a million maker maybe i'll increase it but you know I, I as you guys know i a lot on the betting a lot on the showdown side literally it's a lotto on, on a lot of the other stuff and you know you, you kind of learn for me your lessons of putting max 150 uh, bets in when you're putting in three, four grand 
And, you know, unless you literally hit top five spots, you're going to be pretty disappointed. Anyways, what I told you guys, what I was doing and it came out was I was fading the top guys except for Hideki Matsuyama and Emiliano Grillo. And I think I even stated a lot of my lineups will start with Grillo and maybe sprinkle in some Cam Young. But, you know, ultimately that's what I did. I actually even kind of faded Hideki, which, you know, after day one, you could say Finau and Masayama looked like good plays. I mean, Tony Finau, I think, came out with his first six or seven holes and was like all birdies and one eagle. And it looked like game over that Tony Finau was going to win this. And then it just went cold. And then even on Sunday, you know, he made one birdie, hard all the rest. So, you know, it actually worked out pretty well. Now, again, I don't know in the ultimate, you know, the person that won, I think they might have had Finau. You know, Sun JM was a great fade. Again, Jekyll and Heine, Straka, I mentioned I was off him because... You know, back to back, a lot of golf. Also, just his Jekyll and Hyde of what he's done through the season, and um, of course JT. You know, I'm I'm not patting myself on the back for that, but I've said he just needs to shut it down, and you know he refuses. Which you know I give him a lot of credit, but I don't think it's going to get any better. And again, I'm not going to be playing him at or picking him at the Wyndham. I hope things work out for him, but I think he's ranked like 79th right now. I mean, he keeps going to these events hoping to improve and I think he just actually gets worse and worse from a FedEx standing standpoint but anyways yeah I mean if you faded the top guys and started out with like a Grio uh you're gonna be pretty happy now also I had some calls like Gary Woodland you know just again thinking maybe one time his putter would work that's still not happening and also just even from a ball striking it didn't work out so well for Gary you know I was not on Adam Hadwin I told you you know Thagala is just too wayward now he missed the cut by one stroke but he also made that up a lot on Friday. But again, yeah, wherever it's a tight, tight course, I'm not going to play Sahif. And then the two that were kind of shark- shocking, uh, Mark Hubbard and Lucas Glover, uh, which is a good news for us from a Lucas Glover perspective because I think this is a place where he could strike and we've been waiting for him to get his you know, win again since the John Deere a couple of years back. But he also missed by just one stroke. Um, anyway, so the, the good news was I faded a lot of the most expensive guys and Grio again showed up uh, at one time, you know, I watched the guy and if he could have made what I go by this is from a putting perspective, he literally left at least five putts dead in the jar, one inch from going in the hole or like literally just rolling over the edge. I saw at least five of them. So literally you could put this at 19 under. He should have been, I mean, easily. Now you can play the shoulda, coulda, but I mean, the guy hit the ball, you know, from a ball striking perspective, played really well. Just the putter, just a couple that he could have made would have been uh, the difference. Okay, so with that said, I think that's enough. You know, we got our last tournament here, of course, the Wyndham Championship before the FedEx Cup playoffs. It's the end of the regular season uh, after this. And it's actually the last event, in my perspective, until the fall swing that you can actually hit, again, another long shot, right? We had Harmon, uh, Lee Hodges, both had to be 100 plus. Uh, I, like I said, I didn't bet either but the good news is hopefully we can get our last one in here at the Wyndham championship so they are going to be uh leaving the midwest headed a little south down to greensboro north carolina they're going to be pegging it up at the sedgefield country club and it has hosted this event since 2008 so we have a lot of data here and i think we're all if you've been in this for a while very familiar with sedgefield and the Wyndham championship of course it was a original donald ross design back in 1926 and a pretty you know big renovation in 2007 they did uh, did the greens, the bunkers. Uh, we are at a par 70, which is pretty rare uh, on the PGA Tour. We just came off a of par 71, but we are down to two par fives. But still, we see quite a bit of scoring here. So, you know, it is, I, was, I guess you'd call it a kind of a bit of a, a putting contest, a score fest. But I think it's a tougher course than maybe what, you know, you would consider like a Shriners or even uh, what we just saw at the 3M Open. Uh, Yardage-wise, is playing at 7,131 yards. That's the same as last year. And we're at Bermuda across the board. So it's been a while since we've had Bermuda. Pretty much, you could say, since the Florida swing that it's been Bermuda fairways, Bermuda rough, Bermuda greens. Of course, the greens are this champion Bermuda. And the rough is at the same as it was last year, two and a half inches, which, you know, even though I mentioned at TPC Twin Cities, they were stating four-inch rough, had a bunch of rain. But really, the rough, I didn't see cause any issues uh, for the guys. Uh, we are at our uh, last full player field, as I mentioned, at 156, uh, as the FedEx Cup playoffs will be kicking off. And it is typical cut T65 and ties. Historical cut line, somewhere around two to three under. And, of course, last year you had Tom Kim uh, win this event, which would have been his inaugural uh, first PGA victory, shooting 20 under. And then you had Sun Jam right behind him at 15 under. 
And I think that really sums up for what you need to do at this course. We'll dive into it more, but if you pick guys that are like Tom Kim that, you know, don't bomb it, but hit it, you know, 280, 290, very accurate, awesome with the irons. And Tom Kim just went in Fuego with the putter, which we haven't seen quite a bit in a while. That's a perfect prototype. And then even Sun JM, same thing. Just don't need to be long. Just hit a ton of fairways, good with the irons. And if you're hot with the putter, you're going to win this thing. Uh, same thing, Kisner, a perfect example. He, what, had a six-man playoff. Uh, I remember Adam Scott was in this. forgot all the different guys, but Kisner's done well at this course, and he is an exact prototype. When he was playing well, doesn't hit it long, but very accurate on the tee. Good with the longer irons, so the ball striking, and good with the irons, period. And then just a really good putter. But again, all that's kind of faded away. I think he's actually re- literally retired for the season, is what I heard. I think he let his uh, caddy go. And I think he's just calling it a season at this point, probably getting ready. Uh, you know, it's not a hobby, but I think he's probably getting ready to go fishing and hunting, whatever uh, his outdoor activities. And then, of course, uh, for me, it was one of the bigger shockers since I've been doing this was Jim Herman, who won this thing. I think he was like four or five hundred to one. He won a tournament before this, but it was really, you know, was totally out of sight, out of mind. And funny enough, we have seen Jim Herman a few rounds been popping up uh, from a show game perspective, but the putter hasn't been cooperating he literally at the uh, 3M Open, I think after day two, was like top three or four ball striking, but the putter was losing like three or four strokes uh, against the field. But anyways, he won it at 20 under. And then uh, the year before that, JT Poston actually won, I believe it was like 19, 20, or I have it on here somewhere. A little larger than average size greens. I always tell you guys 5,500 square feet is the average, 6,000 square feet. So what does that mean? Um, you know, they're a little more slopey here. And, you know, sometimes you got to worry about three putts. I don't think they're in that range. I'm not super concerned, but they are pretty tricky greens. You don't have a ton of sand here. You got 52 sand bunkers and a little tighter fairways. Typically, on average, we see about 70, or sorry, 27 to 28 acres of fairway. And you actually have five water hazards out here, but only six holes actually come into play. So a little bit of water, but nothing like what we just saw at the 3M Open. And a lot of that is this kind of windy river that works its way around. Like when you look at the overhead map for my memory, there's only like one main, like big water, you know, when I say big, like a big, like a pond, uh, the rest is a, a windy river and the greens are running pretty fast at 12 and a half. And uh, that is one thing that, you know, the greens can get pretty firm and fast here. Uh, so we talk about course defense. We talked a little bit about this already, but uh, they got some long par threes that you have to navigate that are very tricky. Um, I mentioned the undulating slopey fast greens. And then also you got this tall fescue around the course that also follows that kind of windy river. So if you get in that, it could be a problem. And uh, then, you know, they added back in 2020 on number 14, they put a new tee in and moved it back 25 yards to give the course a little more length. You know, past notes, you know, if you've been watching this, this tournament was kind of known as the Webb Simpson Championship or even Siwoo Kim. Like those two guys between themselves, if you ever won this thing, or like we're you know second place or third place like every year like so those two guys just showed up over and over and over even billy horschel quite a bit has had good showings here you know at one time it, when this tournament happened it was just bet webb and definitely play webb you know his first win was here his well it was his home state grew up in the area daughter was named after this court you know after this tournament the windham so everything and you can kind of see here i don't know if this is still true he might have missed a cut last year but uh, at one time, he was seven top tens, like runner up twice, uh, two third places, you know, never missed a cut. It was just some old past knowledge if you don't know much about the window. What I will state for a little, you know, newer, and you guys have been watching me for a while, I've been saying that I don't play Alex Smalley a lot and I don't bet him, but I've been waiting for, you know, him to come back here because this is his home course and he's had, you know, really good ball striking here. The putter hasn't always cooperated, but. I would think with what we've seen with Alex Smalley has been playing better golf, this could be a good chance for him to win. Hence why you saw him on the cover of the video. All right, so not the greatest overhead view, but you can kind of see, you know, there is some trees. There is this brown stuff is that tall fescue. So it's really more what I'm kind of showing. There's that, you know, the biggest water that's on here runs on 15. And it's like, I guess on the par three could get in, let's say in front of the green on 16. But then like there's this windy, so I guess right here that runs along this windy river, you know, runs into 12, looks like it gets into seven, maybe on six, uh, runs along maybe a little bit on two, which could get problems just by the green there. So that's really it. I mean, whenever you see the brown, tall fescue, 
little whiny rivers and then like i said one you know decent sized water uh, on this course and to give you a better visual if for some reason you've not seen this tournament here's a perfect example i don't know what hole this is but uh you can see kind of the river runs and you got this tall fescue so you know you get into this eh, that's going to be a problem all right so let's take a quick look at the scorecard i mean almost kind of tail of two nines you could kind of see the front nine a little bit easier than definitely the back i mean starting on 10 you've got what one two three four five of the hardest handicap holes are on the back side i don't see any advantage of starting guys from a showdown perspective off 10 especially when you got the number one handicap hole you know there is that chance that if somehow you did birdie that hole which you can see you know, only 9.9% in history have done it. Yeah, I don't see a ton of advantage there. I already called out there's only two par fives. There's eight par fours that run between four and 450. So, you know, guys that do that very well can do very well here. I guess manage the par fours. You got four par threes. Uh, I mentioned two of them are 200 plus. So number seven, 223. And where's the other one? Number 12, 235. The other two fall around 175. Check the uh, official scorecard that just came out here shortly, and everything is exactly the same as last year, so nothing changes on that scorecard, so I'm comfortable with that. All right, so we look at past winners, you know, and I, a lot of this when I show this, more for you to look at some names that might pop up that, you know, done well here in the past. Uh, of course, I mentioned Kevin Kisner, and then here was that playoff between, you know, Brandon Grace, Adam Scott, Kevin Na, Roger Sloan, funny enough, the Canadian, and Siwoo Kim, again, who just showed up here and again Siwoo Kim he's maybe got a little more length but you know Siwoo Kim is another guy when I have a tight track that I need you know hit a lot of fairways good with the irons actually good short game and the putters you know kind of showed up a little more this year Kevin Na you know perfect example Brandon Grace and Kevin Kisner you know Adam Scott I would put him as I think he's got a little more length off the tee than average I'm not sure about Roger so I think he's pretty decent off distance wise but you know Russ Henley perfect fit like a lot of these guys have done well like the sony is a perfect example of a good comp course and we'll get in all those but yeah it's more of a plotter strategic than it is of course guys that can hit at 330 340 having an advantage that doesn't show up at this course of course jim herman you know perfect example again you can see funny enough he did get off the tee but it was the putter for him which is typically not that great also you're gonna need to show that around a green isn't super important at this course uh, typically guys hit a lot of greens here in regulation so no issues there uh, Billy Ho who actually best round of golf he's had as far as I know all year uh, just happened at the 3M Open so you know good for Billy he made a cut and uh, wasn't a disaster you see Kisner showed up again Webb Siwoo again you know HV3 we kind of think of him as a bomber finally must have gained with the putter I remember this uh, it was kind of a shocking that you know HV3 who showed up on this leaderboard you know, again, Denny McCarthy, Russell Henley, even Tyler Duncan, that's more of the guys that, you know, you would see here. Uh, I mentioned 2019, JT posted one this thing, Webb Simpson again. They were just a great ball striker. So again, this will calls out uh, the ball striking aspect a ton. We'll get into a ton of shots come from like that kind of 175 range. Siwoo Kim again, Sanjay M again, Bryce Garnett, Plotter, Brian Harmon, Plotter, even Jason Kokrak. You know, everybody always thought he was a bomber. He's not a bomber, and he's actually done better. If you look at his history where he's had successes um, on some shorter courses, funny enough, Rory Sabatini, Plotter. All right, and then, you know, last year, I think it's a perfect example, uh, Tom Kim, Sun J.M. Again, you can just see the same names popping up here. I mean, Tom Kim's new, but Sun J.M. Uh, but, you know, if you know these guys' games, that's a perfect model what you're looking for. You know, funny enough, Max McGreevy, when I saw this, he's been terrible this year. But Lee Hodges and Max McGreevy in my own brain, I didn't see a big difference in those guys at all. Uh, Lee Hodges has played better golf as of late. But yeah, I'm just saying. So again, if you want to take a crazy shot, if you're looking for that crazy long shot, Max McGreevy, I think he's like four or 500 to one. Put a couple bucks on him. Why not? You can make that same argument pretty much. If he showed up here last year, and maybe this is his only good finish, you could about say the same thing for Lee Hodges, what he did at the three open. Uh, Russ Henley again, Lahiri, if you know his game, Plotter, also did well. Uh, remember, had a chance to win the players. Cameron Percy, uh, the Australian Plotter. Brandon Wu, a really good ball striker, typically not the greatest putter. I think he was one of my picks last week. Cheston Hadley, you know, kind of been nipping and nipping. And then, of course, Terrell Hatton, we're all pretty familiar with him, get his game. 
you know, pretty accurate off the tee, but that's a little tiny more length than some of these guys, but, you know, great iron player. And again, so no shocker. I mean, you could see all green on the guys that were like top 10 uh, on approach was very important as usual. And then, of course, I mean, you can see Tom Kim did something that he's never done in another tournament, gained 12 and a half strokes with the putter. You can see the rest of the guys averaging up here around four or five strokes. And you can see Russ Henley somehow. This just means that Russ Henley was just dropping dimes. And what I mean by that is he was hitting it within three feet on a ton and just missed some three footers uh, to end up with that. And I'd say same with like Lahiri. Like if you ever hit that kind of stroke gain off the irons, it means you're putting a lot of five, 10 footers and you're just not making a ton of them, but you're doing it a lot. All right. So that uh, said, and this should say player profile that I'm looking for, but neither here, there are past winners. You can look at the same thing. What is the stroke gain analysis? How am I ranking it? Uh, approach, of course, very usual as number one, but it really shows up here. Actually, last year I went off the tee, but I've more moved over to good drives. Whenever I get on these tighter courses, this stroke gain stat for me really does a better job than off the tee. If you want to know the difference, off the tee takes distance and hitting fairway. It's like a 50-50 combo where good drives actually takes hitting the fairway or the first cut um, before it gets to the rough in the fairway. And then you're hitting the green on your approach. So it's kind of combining more, you know, in that kind of format. And it seems to kind of call out the guys like the Russ Henleys, the Sun JMs, the Tom Kim. So that's what I like. Ball striking does show up here because of this 150 to 175. This is like one of the largest numbers I've ever seen, uh, proximity of the pen, usually around 20%-ish. Uh, 27% over the history of this course is 150 to 175. So uh, definitely looking at that. Of course, putting shows up here, Bermuda. Uh, I did. I haven't done a lot of this, but because there are so many of these par fours, 400 to 450, I did call that out in the model. Also, want to see you guys do well on par threes and uh, that are 200 plus. And I always told you guys, if you've been with me for a while too, Adam Scott and at one time and Billy Horschel for a long time were like the best par three players, especially at those long distances. Um, so it's funny both those guys have done well at this track. And then of course we need guys to make birdies. 20 under is kind of where you know. I see this if, if weather holds. So with all that said, of course, I create a custom stat model. And the first thing that I always look at is recent form. And you're going to notice here, uh, 24 rounds of golf is what I'm looking at. No filters turned on. And then you can see my weightings up here. So approach at 25%, the heaviest weighted, good drives at 20. Ball striking at 15, putting at 10. That proximity, 150 to 175 at 10%. And then the par fours and par threes that we were discussing, five each. And then I got birdies at 10%. Uh, you run that through, click uh, compute, and funny enough, the number one guy that shows up is Adam Shank. And of course, we've all been waiting for Adam Shank to win. And I was shocked when I saw the odds that we're getting on Adam Shank in this field. Um, at points bet, just you know, not too long ago, I got him at 90 to 1. And so I hammered uh, both DraftKings and points bet for Adam Shank. Now, of course, when everything lines up, I've always stated this, and you're excited about you know hitting something, it typically doesn't happen. But that is the guy that I'm most excited about. So you already got one of my early bets. And uh, I would pause this. If you've not, and you're going to be betting, go bet Adam Shank because uh, DraftKings, this, is already, this has been dropping all morning. So right now he's at 70 to 1, but go to points bet, and it's hopefully he's still holding. Uh, of course, Danny McCarthy, same thing. I think it's a great pick. I'm not betting him at that number, but... We've been waiting for him to get a win. Of course, great with the putter. Aaron Rye, perfect fit uh, for this course. It's a ton of fairways, not long, but great with the irons. Typically, it's the putter that lets him down, as you see. Uh, Dougie Gim, of course, Lucas Glover, another one that uh, if you've not done it, I mean, we're all we're waiting. He's had you know top fives over and over and over. He misses the cut by you know one stroke, and now we're getting ninety to one. That's awesome. And in this field, this field does not bother me what one bit. Like there's Nobody at the top that I'm like, oh, game over. This guy's winning, just like we just saw at the 3M Open. I think this tournament will look very similar um, when it's all said and done about, you know, what the leaderboard, the top 10 guys is probably not going to be the most expensive. Uh, Siwoo Kim, you know, of course, you know, either he wins or misses the cut. I feel like his volatile, uh, volatility is definitely not like what it was. He's played some of his best golf I've seen this year. But again, the putter can cause him issues. Uh, Hideki, still a good pick. Didn't do as much. Again, the putter kind of let him down. And of course, just so you know, 3M uh, open stats are involved in this, or the 3, 3M stroke gain information is in this too. 
Shane Lowry, I feel like we haven't seen him a little bit, I guess, since the Open. You got Russ Henley, I think it's a great fit, but I just, I can't bet him at 22 to 1. Ches Reby, I have no issues with that at all. I think he's a perfect fit, and uh, I have not bet that yet, so I'm actually going to pause this and go bet this. Hold on. Okay, so I apologize. Literally, I just went and bet Ches Reby because I don't know why. I must have glossed over. So you can get him at points bet right now. Well, this is recorded at 125 to 1, and um, of course, he won the Barracuda last year. Been playing good golf, even putting better. I mean, everything looks real nice, so that's great odds across Austin Eckrow, we're getting better odds. Again, pretty weak field as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not top heavy. And uh, you can get him at like 110 to 1 in points bet. And again, I'm not pushing points bet. They're not sponsoring this. But I'm just telling you guys uh, where I bet, you know, if the value is at least 10, 15 points, you know, definitely go to where you get the best value. And maybe MGM or wherever you're at has even got better odds. Um, Mark Hubbard, of course, missed the cut last week. So you're getting a 70 to 1. Have no issues with that. And then Eric Cole also had a really nice, showing at the 3M Open, and you can see uh, puts the lights out. Uh, and then also the ball strike is not bad. Typically, you know, off the tee can be a little bit sporadic is what I noticed. Uh, and the irons are kind of hit or miss, but good player. All right, and then always, as you notice, I do recent form, looking at the past six tournaments, and then I call the recent recent form, the last three tournaments, which really hones in who's hot right at this moment. And, of course, as I mentioned, Lucas Glover, number one, uh, Adam Shank, so still right up there. Alex Smalley, right, I already told you, uh, I've already, you know, you can already guess, I bet him he's on the cover, and you can get him, I think I got him at 60 to 1 at points bets, a little bit better. Uh, Denny McCarthy, Justin Lauer, funny enough, uh, made the cut, right, I think he made the cut on the number, had to make like an eagle at uh, Friday at the 3M Open, made like, I don't know, it was like a 20 footer or something like that, it was a really good putt. The guy is a really good putter. Now, he's done a lot of that on bent, um, so I don't really have to look at his splits but, I mean, he's a good putter overall. Duffner, been playing pretty decent golf, so 500 to 1. That's interesting. Of course, typically the putter, but he has been ball striking well. I would bet that, like, a top 10 if you're going to do anything with a Duffner. Vincent Norman, just didn't make enough putts. Great ball striker. You can see the putter has been causing him. Of course, he just won, what, the Barbasol, if I remember correctly? One of the Bs, one of the alternate tournaments. Taylor Pendrith, uh, Ches Reby, which, you know, we stopped the show to – Literally go bet that. Doug Gim, Chris Kirk, they didn't even know he was in the field. It's the first time he pops up on the in my on my brain, but a uh, good fit here. Of course, uh, just won the what the Honda. Shane Lowry, Hideki Masayama, Siwoo Kim, and then Troy Merritt. You know, I've been trying to I, I don't know why. I like him on bent and uh, he didn't work out. I think I did pick him, definitely bet him uh, at the three M open, but did not happen. All right, so who's the guys at Sedgefield that uh, you know we talked a little bit already about this? And I try to keep this more recent, so the last three years um, that they played here, which, you know, I think that's a pretty good idea. And against that model that we already discussed, and uh, Webb Simpson, as I mentioned, still in the field, comes up, you know, number one. And I, I laugh at this. That they're giving it at 55 to 1. Like, I get course history, but the guy, and I was a huge, and still am, I'm a Webb Simpson fan. But, man, I was a big Webb Simpson slappy a few years ago. And uh, was one of my favorite players. Still a great guy. Of course, he gave his caddy over to uh, Cameron Young, Paul DeSori. And, you know, because he was like, hey, Paul, go make some more money. My game is eh, pretty much broken, but I'm, you know, still hanging in there. Russ Henley, again, I think, you know, if you want the smart bets, like those kind of see who Kim, Russ Henley. But you guys know me. I'm too dumb. I like to bet long odds. But then sometimes you even miss the long odds, like uh, Lee Hodges. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, Sun JM, Jimmy Herman. Cheston Hadley, Max McGreevy. Now, again, that's only four rounds, so keep an eye on that. Austin Eckro, which, again, I think that's great odds. I mean, you know, everybody was all over him, already had a chance to win the Byron Nelson. And, you know, of course, he had the putter was, you know, pretty hot for that. And that was Bent Green, so, of course, we're on Bermuda. But, anyways, uh, did not work out for the 3M Open. I think he shot like two over. Uh, Zach Johnson, perfect fit for this course, would be, you know, a good DFS play. Billy Horschel, Ben Wyan, who's shown up here before and been playing really good golf, and then Ryan Armour and uh, Ryan Moore, which at one time, I remember, I was at the Travelers. These two jokesters were like, I think it was round one, were like your top two guys that were leading the tournament. Uh, but yeah, perfect fit and Taylor Moore. All right, so I always do this, and of course, putting is crucial always, but even here, it seems like it really shows up. So who's the best Bermuda putters over the last, you know, six tournaments they played on Bermuda. So this would be kind of taking in all the Florida swing. 
that we had earlier in the year. Uh, Chad Ramey, of course, who won at Corrales, Punta Cana. Yeah, Brian Gay, who won the Bermuda. So it's kind of funny. Um, you, you know, if you know golf, Brian Gay on Bermuda, like that's the one thing he does is just putt lights out. Also, he's a plotter. I mean, he would be, I'm, I'm guessing he's going to be bare men. So from a DFS perspective, not a bad play down there in the large, like GBP. Uh, Sam Ryder, Justin Song. I mean, the one thing I learned about this guy is this guy can putt his golf ball. Um, the rest of it's not bad, but man, his one elite skill that I see is putting. And just like we talked about Ludwig Aberg, who I was on uh, for the, at the last minute, I jumped on this train for the 3M Open. It didn't work out that great. I mean, he had a really good Friday, made the cut, but then nothing else. But what I've learned with Ludwig is he is one of the best drivers of the golf ball from an accuracy and distance that I've seen, like Victor Hovland-ish, but his irons are just, right now, from what I see, very suspicious. And he's actually a pretty good putter. So his strengths are from his driver and putting. And if he ever gets the irons, if they click, which they do at times, um, that's when that guy, you know, it's going to go, he'll be an elite talent as he works on the irons. Sorry, sidetracked. Uh, Thomas Detry, Taylor Moore, Andrew Putnam, kind of an interesting play uh, or bet. It could be Matty Kuchar. Actually had a pretty good 3M open. Harry Hall, Ben Taylor, Ben Griffin, Alex Noren had a pretty good 3M open. The Shankster. We did not see, if I remember correctly, at the 3M Open. Patty Kazar and Sammy Burns. Watch out, Bermuda Burns. Um, you know, this could be, uh, he's got to have done well here. I have to, we'll have to look at that, but uh, some of that could be an interesting play or pick or bet. All right, so I always tell you guys for the Ironman, uh, what we're doing now is we are taking approach. So this is total all the approach shots these guys hit in the last six tournaments, 24 rounds. I'm waiting at that at 50%. And then we're specifically honing in on that one that's crazy, 27%, uh, 150 to 175. And then this is the next uh, that comes up at like 18% is this 175 to 200. There's also the 125 to 150 that comes up there pretty, you know, but does, it's not like high comparative. So this will pull out the better ball strikers out of these two proximities. So that's why I went with this. Um, and off the, you know, no shocker, one of the better ball strikers on the PGA Tour. Hideki Masi, this actually shocked me. I'm not going to lie. Um, Alex Smalley is number two over the last six tournaments in a ball striking perspective from these yardages. So again, tells you again, you know, jump all over Alex Smalley. Like my shank thing, wouldn't shock me, missed the cut, but uh, I'm all over that. Aaron Rye, Siwoo Kim, Justin Lauer, Ryan Moore, Ches Reby, and uh, Lucas Glover, Vincent Norman, Kevin Yu, Adam Shank, Nate Lashley, JT, Chris Kirk and Dougie Gim are your top 15 best iron players uh, on approach and at these two proximities over the last six tournaments. All right, the other thing is, like I said, ball striking is definitely something that we need. And again, if you don't know what that is, it is off the tee combined with approach. So it's teeing off and then hitting your irons. Who does that the best? Forget about around the green, forget about the putter. It's just getting pretty much to the green. And Alex Smalley, again, no BS here, uh, came up number one after, after, uh, last six tournaments and again i would have never guessed this uh, until i got into the analysis so that's why i do this stuff to be honest i mean this is why you know when you watch golf as long as i have and you're watching it all the time you think you know a lot and you think you see a lot but there is things that the research and analytics will do that will pull out some things that you just you know for me are counterintuitive and i'm sorry but alex small is one now again the putter is what holds them back but we'll uh, dive into that in the pick side uh, Lucas Glover, Gary Woodland, again, perfect example, right? One of the best ball strikers all year, just horrific with the putter, and that's why the guy is not one. But again, like we would say with JT for a while, boy, that putter ever just gains a stroke. Like, he could definitely either win or be top five. Doug Gim, Sue Kim, Vincent Norman, Ryan Palmer, perfect example, fits right into there, team no putt. Kevin Yu, Hideki Matsuyama, Aaron Rye, Russ Henley, Cameron Champ, who... Uh, actually pulled out of the 3M Open, which, you know, I, I tweeted out, and I guess uh, he was expecting a baby, which I don't think anybody knew, and so his wife delivered, like, the day before or something like that, and so away he went, so side note. Uh, Adam Shank, Shane Lowry, and Trevor Cohn, so I guess he is right now, at least in the field. Who knows? It'd be kind of interesting to see if he actually plays, and I just put this up here just so if you're curious, and again, if you're a little new to golf, so this is the end of the, you know, the regular season after the Wyndham, and then we we're going into the FedEx Cup playoffs. And I also put it up there because things have changed, um, which I'm pretty sure if you've been watching golf, you know this. Instead of top 125, now it's top 70 qualify. 
and then that gets narrowed down to top 50 and then down to top 30 and so also why i bring this up for me is i'm not sure i might i'll probably do a show for the fedex st jude but i'm probably going to shut it down after that because honestly like you know from a betting side and a dfs side it gets pretty blah um we only got 50 guys and i think you know you guys can probably figure out out of 50 dudes who you want to play so that is my thoughts and then i'm not probably i'm not sure yet if i'm going to do a swing season or not this year you know i'm kind of evaluating some things like i said i'm doing more and more football uh not that i've done anything from a content perspective i've been thinking about it i've talked you know tweeted with some of you guys about it but i might do some of that this year and um i don't know i gotta see i gotta figure that out what i want to do maybe I, i'll do a little bit on this to fall but I haven't figured out exactly how that's all going to work out but it's been a long year already and uh if you guys think about it like the season you know we've been going non-stop because there was no break and really this upcoming after the fedex playoffs now they're calling it like the fedex you know improvement time or whatever like it's not the fall swing so it's just guys that are trying to improve their ratings really to keep their card pretty much how i see it but anyways i don't know but i just want to pop this up there so you guys know what's coming after the windom and then you're going to hear so much about this during the tournament you're going to want to puke yourself or you know but anyways about you know the movement of these guys right here uh typically guys i don't know it seems like it's a little harder to fall down you know and i'm saying for like if you know austin Eckler, let's just put it this way you know right on the cut line and then you got like a ben taylor like typically the guys that'll move will be maybe these three and these three um and you could definitely if you have a really good outing you could definitely move up but why i'm bringing this up for you guys is that I have seen at the Wyndham that, and more towards when it was 125, that there'd be some randos that were like a right around this cut line that would just go out and have an amazing week. Because I think they went out with a mental thought is like, hey, I'm hunting every pin, uh, no conservative, we're going for it nonstop because, you know, just to get into FedEx Cup playoffs. And I feel like a little bit of that, like a Garrick Higo, Cage Lee, um, you know, Cam Davis, Austin Eckrow, like those guys are going to have just that extra oomph to play for. And also, by the way, Cam Davis had a great uh, Sunday at the 3M Open. And, you know, again, he's been a bit Jekyll and Hyde this year, but I feel like his game has been trending a little better uh, as of late. So anyways, you're going to hear enough about this, but I just thought I'd throw that up. If you're curious, I think it's always interesting to pick some of these guys from a DFS side. Um, even though a lot of these guys, like SH Cam, literally, I'll tell you right now, I bet him. Not because for anything tells me that he should win here, but because he's on this cut line and also like his game has been like, he has one good round, one bad round, but maybe like a Lee Hodges, this is where he pulls it all together. So, you know, pretty good odds on him. And I'll talk about that on the betting card. All right. The last thing I need to cover with you guys from the, the model perspective is comp courses. And I really like this one. I always tell you guys, when you get to these kind of plotter strategic courses that it you really, the comparable courses really, I think, bring out the guys that typically do well here. That's my feelings, and it seems like it holds pretty true. So, of course, I'm using Sedgefield for the Wyndham. Uh, we got TPC Southland, where they're going to be playing that first FedEx Cup event. We were just talking about the St. Jude. Uh, you got the RBC Heritage at Harbortown. You got Seaside for RSM. And you got Wailea, where they uh, play the Sony Open. And then, of course, Colonial, where they play the Charles Schwab. And all of these are Bermuda. Ex I know Colonial is, is bent. For some reason, I'm starting to question myself about TPC Southwind. I think it's Bermuda. Pretty sure it's Bermuda. Um, so you got what? One, two, three. So five of these are Bermuda greens. And then, but I mean, a Charles Schwab is your quintessential strategic plotter course that you need to be very accurate, uh, hit greens, make some putts. So perfect fit. Anyways, with that said, against my model over the last six tournaments, 24 rounds, no filters turned on. And you're going to notice like Austin Road is the only one that's only got 12 rounds of golf on these tracks, um, but comes in third against my model. Uh, Russ Henley, number one, makes total sense. Sammy Burns, uh, Svensson, Glover, Matsuyama, Siwoo Kim, Ches Reeve, Lauer, Ryan Armour, Davis Riley, Sun JM, Charlie Hoffman, Adam Scott, and Sebez are your top 15 players against my comparable courses I'm selecting or the last six tournaments they played on them. Okay, so with all that said, who am I betting? Well, I've told you already quite a few of these guys, but we'll go over it again. Uh, Adam Shank, as I mentioned, you can get, I did get him at 90 to one at points bet earlier, and he has shown up all over the model and uh, feel really good about that. But again, whenever you feel super good about something, it doesn't work out. Uh, Dougie Gamut, 90 to one. 
think again, at points about all these, I feel like are better. So again, it's worth it. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm not being sponsored, but man, they do have pretty good odds. Uh, Lucas Glover, same thing, 110, I think you can get. Alex Smalley was only five points better at 60. And again, I've talked about this before, points bet. It seems like when you get like the higher odds guys where you get better spread, you know, better points at points bet. And then, you know, down low, they're pretty comparable from the DraftKings. Um, Austin Ekro, Kevin Yu, I like at the 110. Again, I think I got 125. Dylan Wu, uh, I think you can get like 150 there. JT Poston, same thing. I think it's like 40 to one at points bet. James Hahn, this is purely just, he's a really good ball striker. And I've seen him have these little, you know, one day events where he does well. Also, I, I had the pictures. I was going to go over this, but I'll just talk about it really fast. If you look at like uh, Norlander, Han, Glover, Siwoo Kim, like all the guys that we used to know as really good ball strikers, but horrific putters have all kind of moved to that almost broomstick kind of belly putter, you know, the longer, like an Adam Scott, perfect example. And then these guys are starting to putt. I mean, they're getting confidence, hence like Glover, Grio. Um, I just noticed Norlander, Russell Knox has moved to it. Like all the crappy putters have all moved to like this, the longer putter. And um, I just noticed James Hahn is also doing it. And it did show up a little bit more at the 3M Open, uh, even though I don't know where he actually ended, but he did have some moments. So yeah, anyways, 400 to one, I think I got him at. Uh, Adam Svensson, I think I got him at 90 to one at points bet. That's significant. And of course, Adam Svensson won this year, the RSM, which is an amazing comp course. He also almost won the Sony. Uh, that was the year where my buddy Henley went in with like a five shot lead, lost to Matsuyama in a playoff. And I think it's, you know, another amazing comp course. Uh, so yeah, 90 to one. I like that a lot. That's, that's a good odds. That's a uh, DraftKings sportsbook. Just so you know, that's where all these odds are coming from DraftKings sportsbook. And then last but not least, SH Kim uh, coming in. I think you can get him at like, I think it was like 150 to one uh, over a points, but definitely better than that. And again, you can see from a modeling perspective, nothing great, you know. So, but he does have, as you know, you play a lot of the fantasy golf, you will see SH Kim will knock off a seven under uh, day and then, you know, go out and stink it up the next day. But so that's what I got. Oh, and then of course, Ches Reeve, uh that we did while I was on the show uh, because I like that so much at, you know, 110 to one. So put that on there too. Okay, so uh, let's go now over to Fantasy National. Let's go through the picks and uh, some player analysis, and then I'll get you guys out of here. Okay, so I've hopped over to Fantasy National, and as always, if you're putting any money in DFS or betting on golf, this is the tool for you. Check it out. I highly recommend it. Okay, that's the plug. And then moving on, as always, we're going to be looking at DraftKings pricing, but of course, you can use these picks in any format that you're doing, FanDuel, whatever it is. And as always, I'm going to be looking at the last 24 rounds. Keep it a pretty recent of golf that they played or six tournaments. I've got no filters on, but of course, I've done a lot of pre-work, as you've already seen in the preview show. And right now, I've got 24 picks um, that I'm looking at for my player pool. Again, this is with a focus on the GPP large 200K to first winner. And as always, we're going to be looking at what we call the sneak peek or what I call kind of the dashboard mini model uh, I've got five stroking categories here highlighted. You also get to see salary, projected ownership, but this is early on Monday. Uh, cuts made. And then, of course, over here, I got birdies gained. This is how many birdies have they made over the last 24 rounds. We want to see green going on the way up. And then recent results over the last five tournaments played. And then also, of course, we get the history of what they've done here right there. So you get a lot of information in one view. That's why I use this to uh, go through my picks now. And also you get to see a lot of analysis, which allows you guys to make some of your own decisions when you get to see this. And uh, right off the bat, in the 10,000 range, we got four players we got to make a decision at. And as you notice, I've got one highlighted. I will be skipping uh, Sun JM, which I did last week. Of course, that worked out with a miscut, but Sun JM does have an impeccable history here with a six, a T6, a T9, and uh, of course, a runner-up. And then uh, 2021, he had a T24 with his course finish so you can make a lot of arguments if you are going purely on course history and typically he does putt better on Bermuda I can see why you want to play Sun JM but I'm going to pass even if he does let's hypothetically make the cut uh, I could see him finishing somewhere in those 20s as he's been doing and for the most expensive 
you know, player on the board from a DFS side, I'm going to go ahead and pass. Hideki, you know, been playing pretty good golf, right? I mean, he had a 13th, a T13 at the Travelers, T13 at the Open. Not a bad showing at the 3M Open. Actually hit the ball really well. Just, you know, didn't make enough putts, which typically happens. Of course, he missed the cut at the Rocket Mortgage. But he's also had a pretty big, you know, mixed bag of results. And again, it's probably all, if I went and, you know, dove in, we could do it. I would already, could tell you it's going to be the putter that probably caused him to miss some cuts there. Let's go see real quick that information for the Wyndham. So, yeah, I mean, he gained back uh, 2015. He gained a stroke, gained two strokes in 2013. And you get to see a little more results. But he's got four missed cuts, three made. And, uh, but the ball striking, you know, gaining, not great, but in the green. But again, around the green and the putter, something about uh, has kind of struggled. So, with all that said, I'm going to pass on him. I'm going to go to Russ Henley, who's had, a, you know, when we talk about a great uh, history here, a fifth, a seventh, a ninth. And then, of course, uh, playing pretty good golf. Of course, missed the cut at the open, but that is not really Russ Henley's bag. Um, not where he does well. And, of course, I mentioned uh, from a comp course side, if you look at where Russ Henley has typically done well or won tournaments let's see here we click on this uh, of course his most recent was a worldwide tech but if we look at like the honda you know that's kind of a strategic plotter of course the sony had a chance to win again as i talked about in the preview show the sony again john deere you know more of these shorter got to be really good with the irons and you just hope that russ's putter goes off and then you know this has been dropping but russ used to have really high splits on Bermuda he used to be a really good putter on Bermuda the putter has kind of suffered a bit um over the past I mean you can see it has went in fuego at times let's go do this real quick let's just see what the putter's been up to so not too bad he gained three at the Charles Schwab which is a great track for him it's funny enough it says Bermuda here that it is incorrect it is a4 bent grass and I had to take a moment and check that because I was like wait a minute here even on a comp course I, I called out that of course Colonial is bent and it is bent so somehow Fantasy Nationals got it incorrect uh on the putting surface but I at least know that and wanted to verify long story short Russ Henley in the 10,000 range I think is the best play for me uh I also like Sam Burns I like Sam Burns but I'm, gonna, I'm waiting on this to see where his ownership comes in if I'm gonna play another guy in the 10,000 range would be Sammy Burns. Of course, the driver has been a bugaboo, but everything else is, you know, perfect. And of course, Bermuda Burns. So he's had some decent finishes, not the best year uh, for Sammy Burns. But again, uh, he won the Dell match play, right? So that doesn't come up when we look at Fantasy National. It, it, they just don't pull the Dell match play in, which I understand a little difficult. But don't forget, that is actually an amazing comparable course Austin Country Club is Bermuda Greens they had like the Poet Trivials um you know whatever on there but it is a Bermuda Green and of course Sammy Burns just went lights out beating Cam Young there in the playoffs so I would play some Burns and I think it's a great Austin Country Club is a great match but it's so hard because we don't get to pull a stroke gain data in if I got the stroke gain data from that uh, it would be in here but we do know who won it Billy Horschel who's also done very well um at at Sedgefield here at the Wyndham was a past winner, Sammy Burns, uh, Kevin Kisner, who's won at both. So, yeah, I think it's a great fit. Okay, uh, moving along, Adam Scott, you know, again, he's had a good result here. It was in that playoff when Kisner won. But I don't know. I'm a little worried about what's going on with the ball strike and finding out the putter has been exceptional lately. Um, but, you know, does score a lot of points typically if he makes the cut. So, you can make some arguments. Shane Lowry, no, I just his game just has not – met expectations this year and it's a lot to do with the putter Ludwig Eber I said I I think I've figured this guy out I think I know what he does very well and what he does very well I want him on big boy courses because his driver is at a, an elite weapon let's see what it says on uh, his average driving distance saying 316 which is really good and he's really pretty accurate for 316. the irons that you see so far from the data and what we've got to see uh are just are very hit or miss He'll have a, a good round and then a bad round with the irons. And the putter I have no problem with. And even his short game, which is not being pulled in here, is pretty good. So as I mentioned, off the tee, putting, but I need irons and I need, I don't need that elite distance. So I'm going to pass on Ludwig. JT Poston, right, of course, has been playing amazing golf. Uh, just kind of waiting for him to pop through here. He did this last year around the same time when he won the John Deere. Also almost won the Travelers. Of course, past champion. I expect him to be pretty chalky. He's at 9,200. 
JT, again, I mean, dude, just you can see what's going on. Miscut, miscut, miscut. T60, has he ever played this? He has a long time ago he played here. I feel for the guy. I, I'm a big, I like JT, no problems at all. But I think he needs to get away from the game. And yes, you're not going to make the FedEx Cup playoffs, and it's the first time ever. But dude, go take a break and come back fresh. You know, I would literally leave the clubs, totally leave the game for like a month. Uh, also, he just got married not too long ago. Of course, you might have seen that tweet where Tiger was like, oh, that's why his game all of a sudden is horrific. No, that a lot of guys have gotten married and it doesn't. Now, if you have a kid, maybe first couple of weeks, you know, I could see the baby keeping you up at night. But yeah, the putter crept into the rest of the game and it's just mental at this point. So go take a mental break. See who Kim, I feel like it's been a while. Funny enough, I, I guess he was at the Open, but I remember the Travelers, he missed a cut. So not the greatest recent results, but we all know, like I told you guys, this is like the Siwoo uh, course. Him and, you know, Horschel and Webb Simpson. Like, those guys have done very well at this track. So, also, been playing good golf, and you can see everything else is good. The putter, I'm kind of shocked because he was putting well. Uh, let's go take a look. And he won the Sony Open, which is, a, yeah, I told you guys, one of the better comp courses. So, perfect example. Of course, he is a, a past winner of the Amex, but that wasn't what he won this year. Uh, the Byron Nelson, the Memorial. Funny enough, that's bent. That's bent. But yeah, the putter has been causing some issues, but the ball striking is still there. So hopefully he gets the putter figured out a little bit better. Stefan Yeager I have no problem with. I, I just had to make some choices. And um, yeah, I mean, he's had a good show in here last year. Kind of fits the mold. What's he do off the tee? I think that was kind of the reason. Accuracy, eh, not bad. He's actually got some distance. Pretty good run of form. I mean, again, you got to make some choices, and I, I, I guess, like I said, between Cam Davis and Stefan Yeager, if I had to, you know, flip between them, we'll see the ownership comes in. You can see pretty high right now. Uh, I just like Cam Davis for his price point. Of course, you know, I got to watch quite a bit of him at the 3M Open, so maybe I'm a little biased at this moment. But I, I've always thought Cam Davis just kind of used to be, from a price perspective, really outscored his price tag. Also, pretty good showings here. Right. I also think about what I know he's done, like at RBC Heritage. Let's go take a look at Cam. Of course, uh, his one win was at the Rocket Mortgage, which I don't think is that great of a comp course. Just scroll down. So there's the RBC Heritage. I think he's had a couple good showings of players. Not a bad comp course. I don't have that in there. The Sony Open. There's that FedEx Cup St. Jude, the John Deere, Schwab, RBC Heritage. So he kind of fits, even though I, you know, people think of even me as kind of like a bomber ball striker. But funny enough, he does show up on these more technical tracks. Maybe, you know, clubs down a little bit. So I'm going to put Cam Davis in over Stefan Yeager. Danny McCarthy, right on me. Missed the cut at the Open, but that's just not it. We've been waiting for him. I mean, really probably should bet him to get his, finally get his win. Uh, this would be a good track to do it. But again, I think he's about 25 to 1 or something like that. I can't, I can't bet that out. It's for Danny McCarthy getting his first win. But I will play a bit of him in DFS. Aaron Rye, again, you see ownership's already showing pretty high. But, I mean, again, perfect fit now. Didn't do so well here last year. But the Rocket Mortgage, RBC Canadian, uh, T20 even last week. He missed the cut, the Genesis Scottish Open, which, of course, he came off the European Tour, so that's a little interesting. Let's see. I always think of him at um, the Farmers, where he showed up. And that's, you know, like a big boy course. That was like his best finish. It was early on. There's the Houston Open. Just scrolling through here real fast. There's a Boise. I don't know why it's not coming up. Uh, let's do this. There it is. The Farmers back in 2022. I think he led maybe after Saturday or something like that. That's the year what Luke List won, I think, that. But, um, yeah, if you kind of look at his mix, kind of, but Charles Schwab shows up, you know, WGC St. Jude, which would be a TPC Southland RSM. So I just, you know, when I want someone that hits a ton of fairways, which he does, we can look at that if you want to see it. 70% hits about 295 on average. Uh, typically it's the putter. But the putter has been running pretty hot. So if that sticks, you know, it should get us in there. Top top 10. Uh, Killer Keith had a good 3M open. Really didn't see that. Uh, the driver, you know, did what he did. But I guess he must have putted. Let's go take a look. I didn't even look at his stroking stats from the 3M. Yeah, there you go. Pretty rare uh, that he gains five strokes with the putter. He did uh, U.S. Open, didn't hit the irons good. The putter hasn't been as bad. It's the irons that actually let him down. And it's funny, I watched him a lot at the Zurich, the team event um, with Sun J.M., and he was horrible. 
Now, maybe it was just that team kind of event, but man, I got to watch too much of Killer Keith, and that kind of soured me a little bit on him, um, on how much M had to like do for that pair. But it was one event. I need to get over it probably, but again, you could, I are telling me no thank you. Ben Wyatt had a good show in here. Uh, T35 last year had a T3 2019. You know, it's funny enough, I'm still saying the driver, which I feel like he's a pretty good driver, but really good ball striker. So it, it makes sense, you know, he could do well here. And the putter has done a little better this year, I feel like. Uh, Bo Hosler, I didn't mention this in the recap for the 3M Open, but if you guys saw, he shot, what, 10 under or 9 under uh, on Sunday? He had eight birdies in a row. The guy just went in fuego, which I have seen him. That's the best he's ever done, uh, but he climbed up. I think it was like T50th, something like that, um, starting Sunday and moved all the way up to T13. So he's coming off a heater. Uh, do with that what you may. Chris Kirk, just a driver, makes me a little nervous. I think it's not a bad course for him. You see, you know, he struggled a little earlier on, but the John Deere, the Rock and Mortgage, of course, he's won the RSM and then just won the Honda this year. So you know, the Honda PGA National, you know, kind of same kind of par. You got to be very accurate. And, uh, but it just feels like his driver is kind of went a little wayward on him here. Let's go take a gander. Yeah, you can see it right here off the tee. Uh, I don't know what he did at the open, but I'm going to pass on Chris Kirk, Chris Kirk. I told you Alex Smalley, you know, this is probably going to blow up all up in my face, but you see he's been playing good golf, a T9, a T2, a T25. You know, T13, it's his home course. He plays a ton here. And I uh, just hope the putter works. And if it works, we should be all set. You see projected ownership right now. It could be super chalky. A lot of people are probably on what I'm on. Uh, also, of course, it doesn't help that, like, literally, if he would have been ranked, I don't know, like 30th, 40th, I still probably would have played him because I just feel like if it's your home course now, I've seen this, like Ryan Palmer at um, Colonials, his home course, Charles Schwab that he's really never done anything good there. And it's, you know, the pressure of, you know, your friends and family there. So, you know, who knows, that could come back to haunt, but yeah, I'm gonna play him. Like, it looks like a lot of people are playing Alex Smalley. Um, I'm gonna pass on Taylor Moore. We got Adam Hadwin from a stroking perspective, looks good, but he's had a couple of cuts in a row. So I'm gonna pass on that. Patrick Rogers, I'm, he had a T37, he came off that almost win, shoulda, coulda win at the Barracuda. Not a bad course for him, I don't, I don't have an issue, but I think I'm gonna pass. Gary Woodland, I just, I can't do it. Just ball striking extraordinaire, but just can't watch that putting. Uh, JJ Spawn, it was kind of heated up. Also, his win at the Valero, which was on Bermuda Green, so it's kind of interesting that his own. I think this is a perfect course for JJ Spawn. A lot like Aaron Rye, you know, hit 295, 300, but very accurate off the tee, typically. The irons are, you know, can go on and off, but, you know, if he hits that one good putting out in, and typically Bermuda should be his best surface, yeah. His best worst surface, as you see. Yeah, I like JJ Spawn, and like I said, good run of form. What's he done here? And it has not had good historical form, so maybe that's why uh, projected ownership. I mean, 2017, he had a T16, but I think it should fit him perfect. Uh, Vincent Norman got. The, you know, I played a lot of him uh, in Showdown this past weekend. I like him. Another Swede. You got Ludwig Aberg and Vincent Norman. A lot of talent coming out of Swede, Sweden. And of course, he just won the Barbasol, I mentioned, and just the putter is what let him down. I think from a ball striking perspective, he was like top 10. Yeah, gained four off the tee, five on approach, lost six strokes to the putter. And you can see he gained five strokes, and that would be, I think that's bent grass. Yeah, Keen Trace. But again, I don't have a problem. I mean, he's not that bad of a putter. And he's never played this event. Akshay... Of course, uh, funny, uh, you know, we all talked about how he withdrew from the 3M Open thinking he, you know, already was in the FedEx playoffs. That was not the case. He learned that the hardware, I think he's ranked 90th, somewhere around there. So, of course, he's playing at the Wyndham, and, but I don't like his game for this course so much. Again, he can spray it a bit. A lot, I kind of put him as Sahitha Gala in my brain, a little bit of the same. Um, Sahitha Gala is a better putter, and I guess maybe, uh, you know, Maybe Akshay is a little better on a ball striking perspective. Kind of hard to say that, but, you know, at least maybe recently. Give me Eric Cole. Uh, pretty good showing at the 3M Open. Kind of up and down if you look at his rounds, but makes a ton of birdies. Also, you know, typically is okay. Good, have been good with the irons. Awesome putter. So I think it's a perfect fit for this course. 
actually someone that could get their first win. Again, if you think about the crossovers uh, of Honda, PGA National, I didn't use it as a comp course, but could definitely be not a bad comp course at all. Thomas Jetry, no, thank you. Billy Horschel, I'm going to play him. I think we're getting a discount right now because, I mean, I know what this guy, of course, past FedEx champion. Of course, he just won the Memorial last year and in his game, trying to make some changes during the winter. It bit him in the ass, but I think he's figured some stuff out. You can see, I mean, a T13, I mean, of course, elite history here. Let's go look. I'm trying to, like, figure there was one other outing you had. Maybe it was the Travelers. We had a couple of days that were decent. No, well, maybe it was the Travelers. Charles Schwab, he got around there. I mean, the CJ Cup was actually his last tournament that he actually did anything. Of course, as I mentioned, kind of shocked the world winning the Memorial. That was, you know, pretty much an elevated event. The elite of the field was in that, and he won it. Uh, Harris English, I always pull four, but nah, I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. I'm actually jumping on this fencing train. I'm seeing this little uptick. Of course, I've talked about he won the RSM this year in the fall. He also almost won the, um, the Sony. Where he does his damage is these kind of courses, and I feel like he's getting his game back. He had to take uh, – he, he withdrew from a tournament, and I, I'm guessing this had to be physical, but if we look at – you know, earlier before that issue, right, he was on a great trend, had a 13th at the players, came off that win at the, you know, the, the RSM, good showing at the Genesis. And then all of a sudden he like got hurt, like he withdrew, and then all of a sudden started missing cuts. His game was in a big funk right here in June. And I feel like he's kind of trending back that way. You could also see it from the ball striking. So, yep, I bet Adam Stenson has mentioned, and also I will be playing him in DFS. Taylor Pendrith, nope. Uh, Mark Hubbard. I was back and forth on this one. Uh, you know, I'm going to go in. I didn't make 25 picks. I'm going to put them in my player pool and make that my top 25. And because I was kind of back and forth. But you know what? I've seen this before where it's like T6, miscut, T6, you know, miscut. I mean, it wouldn't shock me. The course should fit them. Now, they're not the greatest uh, history, but I'm hoping that his ownership is low because of that recent miscut. And also this history is not good at this event. Uh, you know, he's hitting four make cuts, but 7,500 for Mark Hubbard in this field, I think it's a pretty good value. You see my model likes him too. So yeah, I'm going to go with it. And then uh, Lucas Glover, of course, another one that just came off of this cup. Both these guys I picked at the 3M Open and both burned me. But of course, Lucas Glover, not the greatest course history, but should be a perfect fit. And I do feel like he's been putting better, as I mentioned, with that longer putter. Of course, those results say that. And he missed a cut by a stroke. Uh, he was three under and it moved to four under late. Matty Kuchar, you know, made a couple cuts. So 7,400, you know, also could fit him very well. No, thank you. Webb Simpson, I mean, I've been saying this for so long. Uh, would love to see you get back. But, you know, and maybe he'll get played purely just on this. Uh, but, of course, he had a withdraw for the tournament last year. That's when he had, like, the neck thing going on. You know, Brennan Todd, I, I need to mention this. Uh, I bet him. So I, I literally did it after when I started to go through more of my pick analysis and kind of skipped over him. And went, Wait a minute. You know, this guy just came off almost had a good chance to win the John Deere. This course should be a perfect fit for him. And I feel like Bermuda uh, is his best surface. Eh, pretty close with Bent. But I mean, you know, the guy doesn't hit it far, but he hits a ton of fairways. And it's all about what those irons do. You see the irons have been doing better. Gained a ton with the putter. So that was good to see. Did it at Wells Fargo, which is uh, Bermuda. And at and had a chance to win. Let's take a look. He won a bunch of the uh, so OHL, Bermuda. Then he almost won. What's the next one? He almost won three in a row. It was like Corrales or something like that. It was like. Maybe it's a Sony. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but they were right. Like, right. He almost went back to back to back. That was like 2019 or something like that. Anyways, I like Brandon Todd. Adam Shank, you guys already know I'm gaga head over heels for this play. Also just excited about the odds. Now, you know, maybe the, the bookmakers looked at his past history here and said, nope. But I mean, everything from a course perspective should be perfect. But that doesn't always work out for, for sure. Uh, Gary Kago, actually, uh, I think I might have picked him last week. I know I played him quite a bit in Showdown. Had a pretty good uh, Sunday for me. And uh, so I don't mind Gary Kago, but I'm not going to play him because, again, I don't need 
the length. He can get a little sporadic. Justin so this was a little tough one. I like it, but I passed. Uh, Norin, no thank you. Nikolai Horogard, again, I think about the distance, and I just, I don't know, not exactly a little, he gets a little wayward off the tee. Kevin Streelman, I'm going to play him. You know, yeah, a little of this bias, what he did at the 3M Open, but also pretty good course history here and uh, doing things that I need to do. For 7,300, I think it's a great play. No thank you on Ben Griffin. Nope on Sam Stevens, Nick Hardy. Good ball strikers right here, but just can't putt. So they could do okay here if the putter goes. I'm going to go back to Andrew Putnam. Uh, you can see he's kind of fallen a little bit out of favor, especially from like recent, but this should fit him well. Uh, so I'm going to try him. You can see from a modeling perspective, Dougie Gim, I think, again, ranks third in my model, 7,200. I think that's a good steal. Also good recent form, but has not done well here since 2018, though. Showed up. Uh, out on Matt Hughes, Davis Riley, I don't need the distance. Sam Ryder, not a bad play. Could definitely play him. Uh, Nicholas Linheim. He's a DP World Tour. I'm kind of confused why he's in this uh tournament but uh no thank you uh nate lashley no problem with that but I, he didn't make my cut i'm going back to austin Eckroat, right i mean he's kind of fallen a little bit out of favor like he was uh everybody was excited to bet and play him and then all of a sudden you know he's had a little bit of bad run for him but i think of course he also missed the cut to three and open but i think, I think he shot two over for two days so I think, you know you could definitely make an argument for not playing him but he's had a good finish here in the past so, of course, Byron Ellison, where he almost had his chance to win. Corrales. There's, this was part of the reason why the Sony Open. I really like that as a comp. Charles Schwab, he did well at. Of course, he had a good show at the 3M Open the previous year. And then there's the Wyndham. I thought he had a better... He really had one finish at the Wyndham. Yeah. Around the green really bit him. But, man, he really ball strike uh, really well. So hopefully that putter works a little more. He could have a nice finish. Chez Revy, of course, you guys heard me uh, pause the show to make a bet on him. I think it's a perfect fit. Not the greatest course history, but also, I, th I, th I mean, I, I don't know. I like the way he's been playing. He's one of the better long iron hitters that I've seen from uh, proximity to the pin from like that 200 plus. Yeah, so he had a nice run right here. RBC Heritage showed up too, so... Good with that. Stewie Sink, not a bad showing at the 3M Open, but no thanks. Cage Lee, it's funny, I almost tweeted this out and I didn't, but so Cage Lee on Friday morning came out and he was in Fuego, shot, it was like, you know, five birdies and six holes. And so, but he was like four or five over after day one. And so I jumped on that and bet him, you know, to win. Uh, I just saw the, like the possibility of him just, you know, going nuts all of a sudden, like it's been a while, but and uh he literally missed the cut i think by a stroke maybe two so it moved up to four but uh long story short like a ten dollar bet would have got me 59k maybe it was 20 dollars. it doesn't matter like it was ridiculous i mean he was like four thousand five thousand to win five thousand to one to like win the thing but again he first just had to make the cut and he came close but just made a couple bogeys there down the stretch uh and didn't do it but anyways uh chad ramey no but had a pretty good sunday at the three, I'm open. Justin Hadley, been playing good golf. Um, not a bad play. I might have to think about that one a little bit. And then MJ Duffy, let's see if we skip through these guys. Ryan Palmer would kind of fit uh, the guys that I've been looking at, but the putter's been so bad. So I'm going to pass. Kevin Yu, another guy that has some really hot days at the three, I'm open, but really just fits the model that I'm looking for. And I've kind of played this guy in a bit in showdown hence why i just know where he's done well kind of like again like the shorter strategic like the 3m open i'm sorry the sony open at&t the john deere I'm trying to see anything else in past history that i'm not picking up here but yeah i kind of like this guy's game uh, the more i learn about him you see the putter if it goes hot is a lot of these guys but a 7,000 low ownership i will play some kevin Yu. uh i already told you i bet sh cam but there's no real good reason why. Also, you're going to kind of notice I'm playing quite a few Asians, and at this tournament, it sounds dumb, and it worked last year, but um, it, yeah, I played, that was when Tom Kim and Sun JM. So I, maybe that's part of it too. I uh, got a little taste to play some of the Asian guys and bet them. Dylan Wu, come on off that T5. You know, again, it's the putter. 
typically that kind of lets him down. Well, not showing there. Let me say that. Let me retract. Funny enough, it's more off the tee at times, but good drives is not terrible. So anyways, I like Dylan Wu. You know, Lipsky, you know, you'd be like, why aren't you playing a David Lipsky? He kind of fits right into this crew. So no issues. You could throw David Lipsky in there. I'm actually going to call him Taron. I've got kind of a, I don't know. I just like him. I've been playing in quite a bit of him. And uh, I think this could work out well. Again, it's just a putter. So you could really flip these two, and I'd be totally fine with that. I, I might even do it myself. Cameron Champ, uh, just no, just not the fit. Uh, even though the 3M Open, you won at, but not that this is the 3M Open, and I don't think it's exactly the same course. But no, I don't, I don't think I want to play any of that. Tyler Duncan had a, was right up there, what, after day two? Was he up there? Like Maybe it was even day three. Maybe he fell apart on Sunday, but uh no novak no party marty you know see how much play he gets he kind of fits under like the james Hahn. i always look at him as like same thing uh he went to that longer putter and uh really good ball striker just could be one of the worst putters on tour doc redmond had a really nice sunday too he had an early tea time at the 3m open and came out i think he shot like five six under for sunday peter quest not bad t50 he's kind of fallen a little bit out of favor i think you know I don't know, not the course exactly I want for him. All right, let me see if I got anybody else. CT Pan's actually, yeah, he had a T second here back in 2018. I'm just terrified of that wrist, even though he did make the cut at the 3M Open, but I'm, I don't know. He burned me so bad when I, I don't know, a few tournaments ago. I think that's all I've got. Oh, nope, down here at 6,500. Zach Blair. I got to watch this guy a little more. Of course, you can almost see like a T2, T13. But he's very accurate off the tee. You see 67%. He doesn't hit it long. But this is a course this guy could do something at. Valspar, which I don't see that being right, but it, it did. So there you go. I think he just, what did he putt? Yeah, he gained five strokes of the putter there. The guy's a really good putter. What's his irons typically do? Kind of off and on. But for 6,500, if I'm going to take a, you know, a dartboard throw, just a Hail Mary, I kind of like the Zach Blair uh, but his ownership right now, I mean, it's so early, is up there a little bit. So I don't know. I might have to move off that if if, it's, if his ownership's like over a little. If it's over 5%, I'm not playing it. You can play the Ryan Armors or Ryan Moores. It kind of makes sense. Actually, funny, Richard Wierenski, this is a course uh, which shows up that he could actually do something. And as you guys know, I have done some betting of Richard Wierenski. Uh, I know a lot of it came from that 3M Open. Jim Herman, no love for the past champion. You know, funny enough, Austin Cook, he's been brutal. But this is funny, kind of an Austin Cook course. Okay, I think that's it. My buddy Brian Stewart way down there. He's, you notice I haven't mentioned a whole lot of Brian Stewart lately. All right, let me summarize my picks for you guys. I got 25 of them here. This is my player pool for the Wyndham Championship for the large GPP. So again, you could use a lot of these picks in any format, head, you know, head-to-head, -head, you know, you versus three other people, like whatever you want to do. But um this is the kind of guys I'm going with. So, anyways, starting off with Russ Henley at JT Poston, Siwoo Kim, Cam Davis, Diddy McCarthy, Aaron Rye, Alex Smalley, JJ Spawn, Vincent Norman, Eric Cole, Billy Horschel, Adam Svensson, Mark Hubbard, Lucas Glover, Brennan Todd, Adam Shank, Kevin Streelman, Andrew Putnam, Doug Gim, Austin Eckroat, Ches Reeve, Kevin Yu, Dylan Wu, Colum Terran, and Zach Blair. I'm trying to see how many guys. Yeah, so I got some cheapies for you here but I don't you know I as you see I'm starting not with a lot of guys over you know 10 2 is my most expensive so not too hard to build uh for this tournament as far as I'm concerned with these picks and a lot of guys in the sevens a lot of guys in the 7,000 range holy cow so and then you know like I said a few in the few in the eights a couple in the nines and 110 so yeah easy to build with uh these guys all right let's uh jump out and wrap this thing up for you all right, that's going to wrap it up for my Wyndham previews, picks, and bets. I hope that helps you get a little better edge on your DFS picks. Also, some ideas on who you want to bet if you want to tell what I'm doing, uh, which eh, at times works out. Uh, do me the honor, as always, click that like button, share this with anybody else. If you've not subscribed, please do so now. Yes, I mentioned probably earlier in the show, as you heard, this is like the last big tournament that I think you could hit a long shot. Uh, so, it's, you know, and then the FedEx Cup playoffs, it's kind of, for me, is eh. Like I said, especially now that they shrunk the player field, 
So I will do a show probably for the set the FedEx St. Jude, but after that I might be bowing out for a bit, but I'll let you guys know that. But still subscribe because I might do some football stuff uh, during the fall, and uh, I will you know probably come in here or there during the fall, so we'll see. And as always, follow me on Twitter. I will never say the X uh, at DFS Golf Guru, and I appreciate it greatly. Again, thanks, guys. I, uh, thanks for checking me out. We'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. I'll do my Before the Lock show. All right, take care.